facial interaction, uh, which is really nice. The, ultimately, um, sorry, uh, we're gonna come back. <laughs> do, should you have a green screen? If you do use a face cam, that's ultimately up to you as well. Some people are like, you absolutely have to have a face cam. In many ways, I don't think so. Um, if you want to spend the money, if you want to set up the lights, which by the way, keep in mind, if you get a green screen, get the lights, get the lights. You need adequate lighting for a green screen. Uh, so please understand you are setting up an entire setup. If you get a green screen, um, make sure it's a good green screen too. I've seen way, way too many where it looks terrible. Um, but green screens are pretty nice, man. It takes up less of the screen. That's our thing. But at the same time, you also remove in many ways, some of the viewers interaction on just kind of seeing your life, you know, like you getting, you know, like what's going on behind you, like how your day is, whether it's gloomy outside, whatever. Um, to be honest with you, Loco brought this up the other day. I was watching her stream and I don't know if I would love her, you know, like her little camera as much if she had a green screen. Um, yeah, it looks a little bit more professional and it's really nice uh, to have that green screen there where you're just kind of a part of the game. But a lot of people also make themselves much larger on screen when they do have a green screen as opposed to just the camera. Uh, so in many ways, it's it's one of those things where it removes a little bit of personality. Um, so it, it's up to you, to be honest with you. Do not feel like you absolutely have to have a green screen. Um, but you do, if you do get a green screen, get good lighting. Get good lighting. Please do. Um, and ultimately, do what makes you comfortable. Sit in your Snuggie and stream if that's what makes you comfortable. Um, if you want to use the camera to get that extra interaction, do it. Um, but like I said, keep in mind the restrictions. Keep in mind that you do need to do extra work for it. Um, and, you know, like I said, ultimately do what makes you comfortable. Because here's the big thing. If you're uncomfortable on camera, if you're uncomfortable on camera, it's going to reflect it. Your stream will reflect it. You're going to have people who do not want to watch you because you're uncomfortable. You know, like if you don't like sitting there on camera, don't do it, man. Um, to be honest with you, I'm going to give you guys an example. If you guys know Bike Man, Bike Man does not stream with a camera. Bike Man is just like me, just like Lyric and, and a whole bunch of other streamers who do not stream with a camera. And I tuned into one of his streams one day and he had his camera on. And to be honest with you, I didn't like it. I didn't like it and I understand, like I get it. Like do not feel the need to do so. Now, is it harder without a camera? Yes, here's why. Streamer traffic. The same thing we brought up on every single episode is stream traffic, i.e. viewer traffic, is having a camera on your thumbnail <laughs> will literally bring you traffic. And that's the biggest thing. Whether or not you're entertaining or not, once people show up is entirely up to you. You don't need a camera to be entertaining, but you will get more viewer traffic with a camera. Once people will see that that camera is on there, you will get more viewer traffic. Speaking of, if you do have a camera, make sure it is in either, if you have a green screen camera, make sure your camera, if you can, as long as it's not covering up the game, in the bottom left-hand corner. Here's why, when you're going through Twitch and you're looking through different games or hosts or that sort of thing, if it's in the bottom right-hand corner, you're gonna get covered up by the game. You're gonna miss out on that viewer traffic. Make sure it's in the bottom left-hand corner or somewhere else on the screen that's not the bottom right. The bottom right is the worst spot for your camera. Um, but like I said, that also brings me to the other point of make sure it's not covering up everything, guys. Like if you have your camera on, do not cover up everything. Please don't, please don't. <laughs> no, like we want to see you, but we also want to see the game. We're on Twitch for games, not, you know, for that. Um, so let's talk about starting up your stream. <laughs> Let's talk about starting up your stream. So, get on wire hot is it's my title for this little section right here. Three, two, one, go. Basically, what you want to do is you want to bring people in and have them waiting for that epic moment when you first start your stream. Um, you guys should notice that when I start my stream up, I have a, I have a like intro countdown thing. I have an intro video thing, and what it does is it has people waiting for their food. It has people waiting for that stream. Um, if you guys were on Twitch today, the um, the what is that thing called? The like drone racing league premiere today on Twitch. I'm not sure if you guys saw that. They had a two-hour intro countdown. You know what everyone was doing? Sitting in that channel for two hours. Is that views? Is that money? Yes, it is. 
Yes, it is. It absolutely is. They're either getting ad revenue or whatever from it, but they're sitting there waiting for it. They're waiting for it. And that's the thing though. Like, of course, a few people are gonna leave, but the majority of people are, are gonna be waiting for the stream to start. So, um, so basically one of the biggest things I can tell you to do is get an intro section going. Do not just throw up your stream and go, I'm going, don't do this, right. If you have to wait for it, it must be good. People want what they can't have. And if you literally give them something to, you know, expect, they're going to wait for it. They're going to wait for it. And it sounds like a gimmick and it absolutely is, but it works, man. But it works. Um, which brings me to get a countdown timer. Let people know when it's going to start. It's going to build that anticipation. So of course, like I said, some people are going to leave, but then again, some people are going to tune right back in right when it starts up. It's kind of how it goes. So, you know, like... For the most part though, like any stream I've tuned into right at the beginning, you know, if it has that countdown timer, either I'm sitting there watching the countdown timer, typing to other people in the chat or doing something where I just leave it up. If I'm leaving it up though, that's still a viewer. It's still a viewer guys. And then once you do start, people are gonna hear it. They're gonna come on over and they're gonna be there for the beginning of the stream. So get yourself that beginning countdown timer. It really makes a huge difference. If you are making countdown timer, make it four to 10 minutes. Um, it may seem like a long time, but it's really not. Uh, honestly, the four minute timer is kind of short for me. Um, when I'm going through that four minute timer, I'm double checking everything, make sure I'm good. Oftentimes I'll run and use the bathroom. I'll grab something to drink, that sort of thing. Give yourself a little bit of time. But the other thing you can do is if you really want to, you can say hello to the people as they're coming in chat. You know, it's a really great thing to just say, hello, stream's gonna be starting soon. You know, that sort of thing. It allows you to have a little bit more personal interaction with some of the people who are there every single time. So make it about four to 10 minutes. Do not make it longer than 10 minutes. That's when you start getting a little bit of a problem. Now, if you have the bigger the event is, the bigger the event is, make it longer then. So if you have a major, major event, make it longer. You know, get yourself an hour countdown if you want to. We did an hour countdown once and it was awesome. We had fucking like, I think we had like 120 people in chat, which, you know, like right now that's about our normal levels, but we had 120 people in chat waiting for the stream to start. And it's awesome. You know, like, like I said, when you do have a major event, make the countdown longer. Um, and I do have a tiny bladder. Yes, it is a medical condition. I get it. So um, here's the other thing. If you do have a startup screen, animated is best. Quality is better. Um, and what I mean by this is if you have an animated image screen, you could have this on here, which would be okay. But to be honest with you, we have, you know, we have this. Oh, I'm sorry, not that. We have this right here, which is awesome. You know, like people, it's at least something visually entertaining. Um, it's something visually grasping. So if you can get animated, do it. Um, otherwise, you don't have to. Uh, you can just have stream starting soon, but at least have something on there. And that's what I mean with the countdown timer. So you know, at least have something on there. Um, so speaking of animated, let's talk about super pretty animated things. Here's the thing. You do not, you do not have to know how to animate stuff. <laughs> you do not have to know how to do it. You can learn it or you can even buy it. That's the thing. There's plenty of ways to get super pretty animated shit on Twitch. Uh, whether that's videos, whether that's the fancy dancy Twitch alerts that I have down here at the bottom, the thing in the bottom left, whatever, you can you can buy this from other people. You can have other people, you can commission other people to do this for you. You can also maybe learn just a little bit. You can maybe learn just a little bit and then you could tell those fucks, you're like, you can not tell me what to do. You can do it yourself. Um, and people get paid for art. People, people do pay for art. It's crazy. Um, one of the big things I can tell you guys to do is if you do have a little bit of knowledge of doing some video editing, you can take a look at videohype.net. Um, if you guys are wondering where I got my intro videos, my, my crazy cool intro start thing, this thing right here, um, I did not make this entirely from scratch. Spoilers did not make this entirely from scratch. Hold on, hold on. We'll go back to music. Um, I did not. I bought a video from videohive.net and modified it in video in, in Adobe After Effects. Spoilers, I did, <laughs> I did. Yes, did it take me a while to do it? Absolutely, because I was learning as I went. But was it easy? Of course it was. Did it cost me money? Absolutely. Sometimes you have to spend money to make money. Um, and to be honest with you, do that. You can also go to the creative section of Twitch and learn from the people there. Learn from the people there. But to be honest with you, this is where I went for mine. Um, I went to I went to videohive.net, 
and that's pretty much it. Um, so that brings me to Adobe After Effects. It's expensive. Shit is expensive, yo. Um, if you don't have Adobe of After Effects, Video Hive may not be a good suggestion for you, but you can also purchase that too. Like I said, if you are trying to make money from Twitch, you will have to spend some money at some point. Whether it's on hardware, whether it's on emotes or whatever, if you can't do everything yourself, maybe you can. Maybe you're a jack of all trades that's fucking awesome. But, you know, look at Adobe After Effects. Uh, the other thing I will recommend personally, wait, did I not go back? Fucking shit. Sorry, I thought I went back to this. The other thing I will recommend is lifestyle graphics. Uh, lifestyle graphics are what who did the bottom left hand corner uh, stuff uh, down the bottom left that says subscribe now and stuff. Uh, they did those for me. Uh, they were completely custom. They also have non-custom ones that you can get from them. Uh, take a look at them. Uh, they, if you do want to buy some from somebody, I wholeheartedly recommend it. They were really awesome um, to work with and they got them to me very fast, which was really awesome. Uh, so speaking of spending money on shit, let's talk about how hard is your hardware. Um, <laughs> let's talk about hardware. Uh, hardware is pretty... Uh, it's pretty essential to streaming, honestly. Um, you could, yeah, of course, you could have a PS4, you could have an Xbox One, you could stream directly to it to Twitch. However, the better hardware you have, the easier it's gonna be to stream, the better streamer you're gonna make yourself. Um, so, um, to be honest with you, get yourself two monitors. Whether it's a TV and a monitor or whatever, you need some way to have the game in a method that you can see as well as having, as well as having chat. Uh, chat is integral to Twitch. If you're not communicating with chat, you know, and you're just getting started out on Twitch, you're going to have a hard time. You're going to have a really, really hard time. People come to Twitch for the interaction for the most part. Now, as you grow, you, of course, you, you transition into more of a, an entertainer who maybe doesn't reach out as much, you know, that sort of thing. But to be honest with you, um, you got to interact with chat. Get yourself either two monitors or get yourself a TV. If you have the TV, get another monitor. Um, and to be honest with you, monitors are cheap. It does not have to be a good monitor. You can order a monitor for a hundred bucks, you know, to be honest with you. So, so definitely, you know, look at doing that. Um, the other thing you can do is do two PC setup. This is my current setup right now, by the way, guys, <laughs> this is my current setup. Uh, that's my mixer board. That's my laptop over on the left. I'm not currently using the laptop, but I'm, what I'm going to look for, what I'm moving towards is having two PCs. Um, now this could just mean having your PS4 or Xbox one and a streaming PC, uh, but basically getting a capture card in one PC that is dedicated towards streaming, dedicated towards streaming. That's what, that's what you want to work towards to be honest with you because basically streaming is really really hard on your cpu streaming is exceptionally hard on your cpu um so you kind of want to look at you kind of want to look at having a separate cpu that's just there to handle that just there to ha handle that so getting a second pc if you're doing if you're streaming pc games is integral to having good quality stream here's why in obs or xsplit you can tell you can tell either of those programs to basically process that video harder, basically use more CPU power to clear up the video. Because I'm sure you guys have been on many, many streams. Um, you guys have been on many, many streams and basically where the stream looks like it's in 40p. It looks like shit because either they're not processing the video enough or they're processing, they're not using a high enough bit rate. And if you can't use a high enough bit rate, you can process the video harder, uh, use more CPU power to clean it up. Um, so, um, to be honest with you, having that second PC allows you to in use an entire CPU dedicated just to processing the video, which can basically give you 60 FPS quality video at a lower bit rate that looks clearer. And that's one of the big things that you can really, really look at. Definitely look at having a separate PC just for handling, sending the video to Twitch. Uh, to do so, um, you'll probably need some extra hardware, but let's talk about that big thing that's right here that has all the knobs on it and stuff. Um, this thing right here, this is a mixer. Um, if you're looking at getting a mixer to handle your sound quality, look at getting one that has a condenser. Get one that has a condenser built in. Here's why. If I scream in this microphone, what's up? It does not blow your eardrums out. Yes, I learned to step away from the microphone when I do that, just to, you know, handle it a little bit better. 
you know, that's just part of learning to stream. But to be honest with you, getting one with a condenser will make your lows sound the same volume as your as your as your louds. Uh, so that's one of the big things you really want to look at doing. If you are getting one with a built-in condenser, you'll probably have to get a microphone that has XLR. Um, I, I ended up getting one as well. Um, I got the Rode NT1, which is amazing. Um, but here's the big thing: if you're getting a condenser mixer. You need to make sure it, it can hook into that it can hook into your computer. So whether that is through uh, through the, the mixer itself or through a second card, that sort of thing. Um, I'm currently using this one right here. This is my mixer that I'm using. Um, I also can recommend the Yamaha, uh, any of the Yamaha series that all of those have a USB plug that will allow you to hook directly into your computer with this stuff. Um, so yes, uh, there's there's so many streams that do not have a condenser. And it's so bad because you'll hear them get really excited about a game or scream or especially scary games and stuff. And it will blow your eardrums out. Um, the other big thing is with a condenser, you kind of remove the whole clipping issue. Um, you can remove the whole clipping issue, which is really awesome. Um, so when we come back, when we come back, um, we're going to talk more about hardware. For right now, I'm going to run and use the bathroom. Uh, but what we're going to jump into is we're going to jump into the Q&A session. Um, so guys, if you have any questions for me while I'm running to the bathroom, tag me in your questions and I'll answer any and all questions that you guys have. As soon as I get back, we're going to answer all these questions for about 30 minutes and then we'll jump back into the slides. We still have a little bit more to go, a lot more content stuff. Um,